watching Greater Brockton. Uh, this is different from what we normally do. We don't normally have individual people on just to talk about themselves, but we're doing candidates for city council, school committee, mayor, and councilor at large. Today we have in studio Mr. Bill Hogan. Bill is a, a businessman from downtown Brockton. Uh, was Hoagie's Hobbies, yes, correct? Yeah, correct? And now you have a downtown welcome center, Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Welcome to Greater Brockton. Thank nice you, to see man. you, Bill. Thank you very much for having me. Um, Bill, what got you into the race to run for councilor at large? Uh, we can talk um, a little bit about the Bill Hogan story, but my burning question <laughs> is, why are you running? Well, you know, um, uh, it's kind of a... Um, I really, you know, it's a hard question. Um, I didn't plan on this. If things had gone right um, over the past few years downtown, and the um, the moment we had some momentum going downtown, that the, the uh, businesses were opening up, and um, things just turned south about a year and a half ago, and it wasn't a dramatic thing. I can't tell you that this just one big thing happened, but things were just not going well. Um, so I says, well, if I'm going to complain, I might as well put my um, money where my mouth is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, can pro I, have, I think I have some very, very good ideas for downtown and the city of Brockton. And I've been trying to put those uh, forward, but I says, I need a forum. Uh, I don't know if that's the correct word or not, mm -hmm. but I need, a, I need somewhere for them to uh, put my ideas forward. And I says, well, let's run for city councilor. I was uh, telling you, uh, Aaron here, the, uh, I lived in Ward 4 for 50 years. Um, I just moved from Ward 4 to Ward 7, and uh, I never would want to run against Paul Sedensky, the Ward 4 councillor, and then uh, to, he's not running this year, and I probably would have ran for Ward 4. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's, uh, it's, it's ironic. I would have ran for Ward 7 to, uh, I think Councillor Azak represents for Ward 7. Um, I like her also. But uh, nobody knows me in Ward 7. So my options were, uh, if you're going to say something, then you, you gotta, you've got to back it up. Well, Councillor at Lodge. I, I'll have to do Councillor at Lodge. Um, I actually thought about Maya, to be honest with you, but I'm not ready for that. And uh, that may be on the, on the work someday. I think I'd make a good mayor. But that's basically how it came to it. I, I can't get to too many specifics. Um, well, because there really wasn't one, one big thing. Um, but downtown really took a bad uh, turn the other way the last few years. And, um, and, and I'm committed to downtown. Uh, downtown's the focus of the, or it should be the focus of um, the city. And it, unfortunately, it's not. That's going to be my main campaign. That's what I was going to ask you. What are your issues? Yeah, my, is main, my main issues is that the downtown is, is um, it's, they're, they are part of the plans. But they are always secondary and an afterthought. And it, it's true where any city or town, the, the focus should be downtown. Everything should resonate from downtown. Yet what we do is we move our, our good venues, our positive venues, out of downtown. And right now we're on this uh, housing project. Um, all we're doing is adding housing projects and parking garages. Um, I'm not against all that uh, in, uh, entirely, but... Um, Let's just give you an example. Our, our, our beautiful uh, venues are all through the city or uh, spread out all over the way. Uh, the uh, Fuller Craft Museum, the Campanelli Stadium, the Historical Society, uh, the Brockton Firefighters Museum, uh, Massasoit Community College, um, the Rocky Marciano statue, the, the high school complex itself. It's all spread out all over the town. Um, if it was downtown, we would have a beautiful downtown. And I know this happened a long time ago, 40, 50 years ago. But unfortunately, the um, tr tradition of uh, moving venues out of downtown continues. So that's my main focus, is to reverse that trend. And, and I, it's, it's all there. On, it's not an opinion. It's a fact. Those venues are not downtown. Well, right. They yeah. moved the high school Years ago. out of downtown in 1970. Yep. They were in downtown, they had double sessions, they were overcrowded, yep. they built a sure. new high school. Yep. The mall, the mall. so yep. the mall was 62 so, yep. up, up there. Yep. Sure. So you took the lifeblood of downtown sure. out of downtown. Now let yep. me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. One way Main Street, that, what's your position on that? Well, I, I'd like to see two-way traffic. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've wasted a lot of time over the years with that being the priority because all we keep on doing is having these meetings and these, we hire consultants that would, you know, should we have it, should we not? Well, of course we should, we don't need another consultant, but we've wasted so much time on that. 
where we could have been doing the smaller things like keeping the beat patrol downtown, keeping the, uh, it's a pretty clean place, I'll say that, but some of these empty lots that are just sitting there and then we put housing on them and say that's going to be the, that's the, the answer. It's not the answer. But the, the um, what I'm trying to get at is the, the whole mental attitude of downtown is, is wrong. It, it should be the place where the community comes together, mm -hmm. um, whether you're from Camp Palo or Montello, I forget where I'm sitting, I think I'm pointing towards Montello. You are. Um, yep. And the east side, the west side. This is, downtown should be the focus of everybody. And I did lose my train of thought a little bit on that. I think it's an important point. Um, I wish I could go back to it. The, the one-way traffic yeah. was like the final dagger mm -hmm. of downtown. It, wasn't, it was thought about in the 50s, believe it or not. I have newspaper clippings. They were talking about it in the 1950s. The first thing that really happened was the mall. That was around 62. They started construction. I think the first store opened in 64. But what that was built for was for people outside of downtown because it was near, uh, out of Brockton. It's next to the highway. Sure. That was supposed to bring in people from Braintree, Quincy, Randolph, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. It wasn't meant to bring the people from Brockton. We already had our business district down here in downtown. Mm -hmm. When they moved the high school out, that All was 6,000 kids out right. of downtown. The first things that disappeared from High Street were ice cream parlors, yeah. movie theaters, um, costume jewelry, uh, the central music. Yeah. What are kids still like? They like music. They like ice cream. They like pizza. They like, they like sure. popcorn. They, that's what they got on that street. Those moved away from downtown. Um, moving the police station out of downtown proper. It was small. It was, it was right it, next it, to the city right hall. Right next to city hall. That's, that's a... Hit, that's a um, it's not a, um, it's more of a um, visual, not a visual, I'm sorry about this, but I can't think of the oh. word. The, when they moved the, high, the police station out of downtown, they isolated the police from the community, from the downtown community, and isolated them even further by putting them on, on that railroad with the, track. With the train right. station. Well, to. years later, we would need the train station again, but unfortunately, they, they have a police station there and a, tra and a train station. Uh, the post office was moved out of downtown. And that may not be the chronological order of when it happened. But it all, it all adds did. up. Now, the final dagger was, was implemented in around 1974 when they said, we need one more. Th it's almost like they said, we need to have one more thing to finish off downtown. And they came up with one-way traffic. So the one-way traffic was the... The and that was Mr. One. Taymor who wanted the traffic to go by his building on Montello <laughs> yeah. Street, and he didn't want it to yeah. go by his competitor on Main Street. Okay. That's what I, I didn't, understand. I didn't think of that. I haven't been involved back right. for years in the DBA. Sure. Yeah. So, Bill, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You, you have, um, there's four seats. Mm -hmm. There are eight candidates for the four seats. Okay. There is no preliminary now oh, there because isn't. there Somebody, was going to be someone oh. dropped out. Well, good. So, basically, tell me why you think you can do better Mm -hmm. Okay, or mm -hmm. add to yep. the mix at the council. You got you got three incumbent councilors. You got mm -hmm. a former mayor. You got a six-term councilor, sure. yeah. and you have a fairly new councilor, Moses Rodriguez. Sure. Why why Bill? Well, it's it's more what I can do for Brockton than against them. I, I know you know I get around town, and I'm sure. I'm personally friendly with quite a few of them, and I have n uh, nothing against any one of them. I, I actually like them all. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Mr. Farwell and I get along very well. Uh, I, I, nothing but, um, if I finished fourth and he finished fifth, I'd defer and let him be at the city council. Mm. Um, but the, uh, I can offer something different than they do. They, one, I understand fully how important downtown is. I'm going to keep hammering this. You guys are going to be tired of hearing it. Not me. Nobody else understands that you're here, yes. Nobody, I don't, I don't think any other candidate, that means the other city councilors also, and the mayor. And city council, anybody in elected office in Brockton does not understand how important downtown Brockton is. Um, the, whoever's into, whoever's elected, if I'm not elected, I hope that they will just listen a little bit. Um, they can actually learn from me. Uh, I'm not the smartest, brightest guy in the world. I'm high school educated. But I, I know the history of Brockton. I, I really know what to do. I'm not saying I have a plan to have all the money I want to do, but I, but I do know what to do. And it would be nice if the city council maybe took a lead towards business and, and um, planning instead of just sitting back and seeing what comes in front of them. Um, the mayor's tried a few things. They've said no. they said yes. That's, and it's not all bad things. It, it's not a complete catastrophe. But I think that I have an awful lot to offer in the long run um, for Brockton. I've conceded that before anything really happens downtown and we can turn the, the city around, I'll be quite elderly anyway. 
Um, I would need like $2 billion probably just to get everything done that I want to do, and that's probably not going to happen. Um, and I don't play the lottery, so it's probably gotcha. not going to happen. Gotcha. Um, I hope to have a time where I can be a little more specific at this. I'll, uh, I'm not going to be doing any fundraising. It's not my style. Um, I, I, have to, uh, I have to get the word out, so I'm hoping that shows like yours will do that. I'll be doing it on Facebook. I have a Facebook site, Bill Hogan, for Council at Lodge. I thought long and hard on that title. There uh, you go. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's did, what I, does that answer for. the we're, question? We're uh, here to get candidates sure. exposure. Yep. We're hoping to get you guys all together yep. after the preliminary right. to do a debate. Mm -hmm. But we had already had this in the works before sure. the other candidate left, so yes. we figured we'd stick with it. Yep. So I don't know what I have left for time, um, if I could get a time cue. I have three minutes, okay. okay. You get a minute or two, whatever you want. Okay. Talk directly in that camera to the voters and tell them why they should elect you. Okay. Well, my name is Bill Hogan. I'm a, a candidate for Councilor at Lodge. I've lived in Brockton my whole life. I'm a graduate of Brockton High School. I did not go on to college. Um, I was going to take a year off. That turned into 47 years. I haven't been back yet. I consider myself reasonably intelligent, <laughs> um, but I am not, I am not a college uh, uh, graduate. Uh, in ways, I think that's kind of a plus. I have a little bit more uh, uh, down-to-earth personality about me, uh, I believe, anyway. Certainly not perfect. I have a lot to offer to Brockton. Uh, my, my campaign slogan is Brockton first, me second. Uh, I'll always vote that way. Um, my opinions uh, tend to be that way. And uh, anyway, that's, that's probably the, the gist of it. My, 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 um, my focus is actually on the, on the future. I know I'm... I own my history museum. People think I'm living in the past, but uh, that is not the case. I'm looking forward to uh, to learn a lot from the history, future. Bill. History phone is the future. Phone number in case anyone wants uh, to get I, you or email. I just moved and I don't know my phone number. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> um, Facebook is probably the best way. Bill Hogan uh, um, for Council at Lodge on my own Facebook. Bill Hogan. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, thank Perfect. you. Thanks, Bill. We'll okay. we'll have you back and hopefully we'll have a debate with all of you. That'd be fun. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Stay put, and I'll just say goodbye. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates on the special edition of Greater Brockton. Uh, Brockton Community Access will bring you coverage of the entire mayor's race, council at large race, city council races, and school committee races, so we can keep you informed here in the community. Thanks for joining us.